by really focusing on navigation bars today and styling navigation bars. So a lot of what we're going to learn today is actually pretty self-explanatory with the website that I've linked. You'll notice that you can scroll down and learn all about this just by looking at the examples. Um, but I do want to focus on how we need to restructure our previous assignment so that you can get this multi-page website for your final product. So as you can see, you need to open your W4D1 folder like so. So here's mine. You'll see that I already opened it and this is what my project currently looks like. Ta-da! Great, but we need to split this up, which means that I need to ultimately add some more HTML files to my folder. So come up with new HTML files for each of your containers, all right? So I'll have English on my homepage, so we'll leave that on index.html. Then I'll have Spanish.html, uh, Russian.html, and Japanese. <coughs> Excuse me. HTML. Now a lot of this is just going to be tedious copying things over so we want the Spanish div on our um, Spanish page. But don't forget you need the entire shell. So before we do that I want to remind you guys how to add um, a navigation bar. Remember it's secretly just a list of links. and you just need to link it to each one. So my first one is home, that's English. My second one is Russian. Oops, forgot that. Forgot that Spanish is second. So this is Spanish. Oh man, I'm just forgetting my final quotes today. Like so. And then, last but not least, Japanese. Okay, cool. So now we have a navigation bar, but it still needs to be styled. So let's copy and paste each one of these over so that we can get this all set up. So let's put Spanish on next. So we paste that over and then just delete the stuff that's not Spanish, right? Don't need any of these. So the only thing that we're left is with the Spanish container, okay? So when you click on Spanish, we should just see Spanish, nice. Um, so you guys can do the rest. It's tedious, I'm sorry, but it, it makes a cool effect. Let's go back home and start thinking about how we want to style this. So like I said, the link that I gave you guys is really helpful for styling navigation bars. And it can be tricky, but if you follow their directions, hopefully you'll get through it. So you can make a decision about what type of navigation bar you want. Do you want a vertical one, so your links are stacked on one another, or do you want a horizontal one? In my example, uh, I have a horizontal, but choose whatever navigation bar you want. I'll stick with horizontal for now. So like I said, your navigation bar is a list of links. We did that. Now, there's some things that we need to remove from our unordered list to make it look more like a navigation bar. And that means that we need to remove the bullets and the underlining and add some margin so that it's not so squished together. So we go into our style.css and we start adding um, our HTML selectors, the identifiers, that we need to ultimately get rid of some of that stuff. So like I said, we need to get rid of the bullets. Um, and the way we do this is with a very long property called list style type. And we want none. So this is basically going to say get rid of the bullets. Another thing that we need to get rid of is the underlining. And that comes from the anchor tag. So we'll use A as our selector. Let me zoom in a bit more so you can see this. 
hopefully a, a little better. Um, and you use another property called text decoration, um, none. So you can find most of these in this article. Okay, there are a lot of them, so it's going to take a while to go through each one. I challenge you to do that so that uh, you don't have to watch a very long video today. So now we have something that looks a little bit more like a navigation bar. Now, like I said, I want a horizontal bar, so I'm going to scroll down until I find that. These are all vertical. All right, horizontal bars. And so what we need to do is make sure that we're using inline and floating list items. So the list items need to be inline. And the way that we do that is with display inline. So we head back here, we throw on a new selector, we say display inline. So now you can see they're right next to each other. That's great. Um, what else do they say we need? We need to also make them float left. All right, so we'll go back and we'll add that. Nice. Now, when you're using float, things can get a little tricky. If your page looked good without it, feel free to get rid of it, all right? If this becomes an issue, you can also position this so that it's still above. So position, absolute, top zero then we don't have to worry hopefully too much oh you can see it's getting up there it means that we probably also need to move this down but like I said sometimes it's a headache to worry about the pos relative position of things so I'm gonna go back to what we had this looked better to me um okay so some other things that might be appealing to you is having a background color, right? So we can use a background color for our UL. And a lot of this stuff is stuff you guys know. So I'll steal the RGB from my text and give this a background color like so. And then you're like, ah, I can't read anything. So then you change the color of um, the text and you guys know how to do that. I'm going to make mine white like so. And you can see it's coming along and all I had to do was take a look at this article. One thing that I find students really like that I want to point out is essentially um, changing the color when you hover over it. So let's see if I can find that. It's on here. I know it is. Ah, here's a great example, right? I'm hovering over and it kind of changes a different gray. The way you do that, uh, they're not showing the code. I think I have to scroll back up. The way you do that is with something called here. Here's a great example. So this weird identifier or selector is a way to tell your computer that you only apply the styling when you're hovering over these HTML elements. So I encourage you to play around with that as well because it can provide for a really cool effect. All right, I'll let you guys check out this article a bit more. Let me know if you have any questions about today's assignment.